Welcome to the Rainier Avenue Radio Spotlight on the Musical Artists of the 32nd Annual Earshot Jazz Festival. My name's Karen Zamit, but most people know me as KZ, and it is my pleasure to speak this evening with performance duo Ms. Elna Jordan and Eric Berlindi. Hi! Hi! Hi. Thanks for having us on the show. Yes. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Um, I do want to um, share just a little bit about the Earshot Jazz Festival 2020. This year, it's been streamed straight to the audience since October 16th, and it ends on November 8th. And it's been a mix of online concert performances, panel discussions, with an emphasis on racial, social, and gender justice. I was sent a, a very nice bio uh, penned by writer Paul Rauch that I would like to read. And then I'd like to have each of you share your musical journey with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul wrote, the Seattle-based vocalist Elna Jordan soulfully delivers gospel, jazz, blues, and R&B songs with keyboardist Eric Verlindy. Ohio born and raised Elna Jordan was introduced to singing as a child in church choir. The interconnectivity between that experience and the blues is what led her to a life dedicated to jazz, performing on the streets of San Francisco, in clubs, and Broadway theater, all the while true to her roots at the crossroads of American ethnomusicology. She can belt out Bessie Smith, as she did in John Hendricks' The Evolution of the Blues, or summon the spirit of Nina Simone. In a club setting, Jordan maintains a close connection with her audience, interpreting the vibe and energy of the room. Elna, is there anything that you would like to, to add to that? What can you tell our audience about your experience? My experience, well, I'm 66 now. So I started doing this when I was like 18. And I was a street musician in San Francisco. And from there, Evolution of Blue took me off the street. I lived with John Hendricks, Lambert Hendricks and Ross. And that was the beginning of, I guess, professional. And I've done three, I did three musicals. And uh, I didn't sing for 20 years, so I'm surprised I'm even singing now. Life happens, you know. I had to raise my son, and I moved up here to Seattle, and I didn't know anybody. So over the years, I finally hooked up with Eric at the whiskey bar. Mm, yeah, or the Owl Thistle. Or, or... Yeah, one of those. Yeah. And well, I just thought... Actually, like, you know, you were, you were coming down to the Reggie Goins, uh jazz offering right but the first time i met you was at the whiskey bar mm. you yeah. didn't like me remember <laughs> i don't remember that but i, 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 I i'm teasing i'm teasing i'm teasing so you know so it's so nice and i came back here and i started with church again my mother was uh the pianist at our church for 50 years and i walked in one day and there was eric this is after we met, and he was now the new piano player. So we ran the choir for like four years. So it gave us a chance to connect spiritually as well as musically. And I think that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> we've been How together. Long ago? Eric, we've known each other about 10 years. Yeah, we've been playing together probably about 10, 12 years now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we also do, uh, which I really enjoy, we do retirement homes and rehabilitation homes. And I just got a grant to, to expand on that. And I want to expand into hospice. But as far as uh, where I'm expecting to go, I don't have that drive to try to make it anymore. You know, I just want to do the best I can do and do what I can for other people. And that's going to enrich my life. I'm enjoying the journey, though. It's all gravy now. It's all gravy. So I'm I'm very content. It's in God's hands because, you know, everything's changing. We don't know how we're going to do it. We don't know how to do the digital thing. It's like we don't know what's going to happen. So I just stay ready. And I know Eric's a lot younger, so I don't know how long he's going to hang with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric and I are really connected. Uh, humor. Eric taught me about the musical map in our brains and I really embraced that because we think of the same songs at the same time yeah. I can play the song and it can be right on key 
it's just, it's actually scares me sometimes because we're it's almost psychic, you know. But that's how connected we are. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, uh, definitely have a, a connection on yeah. and off the stage. Yeah, yeah, but we, you know, what we really enjoy uh, our uh, community service too. So I, with this grant I got from Four Cultures and um, the city, I'm going to uh, expand on the retirement homes and I'm gonna I also do hospice care. So I wanna do the end of life comfort, which I've already done three this month or last month. So uh, those are things that are important to me now, you know, cause like I said, I don't understand what making it is. So all I can do is be me and do the, be the best me I know how to be. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Donna. Thank you. Well, I would like to provide the bio for Eric as well that Paul wrote. He said, pianist Eric Verlindi has acquired a reputation for versatility and reliability in his 20 plus years in the Seattle scene. He may just be the hardest working, most in demand <laughs> pianist in town. He has gained a reputation of being the pianist of choice for many singers, appearing yeah. often with Josephine Howell or with Brazilian vocalist Adriano Giordano in the Entre Mundos Quartet. Verlindi transitions from Latin jazz to post bop seamlessly. His depth as a pianist is best witnessed leading his trio featuring bassist G Dean Schmidt and drummer Jeff Bush. Eric, yeah. what would you like to what would you like to tell us about your musical journey? Well, um, it's been a, a, a long one. I started when I was five years old, uh, and I started by playing classical music for uh, and learning how to read music. And and uh, when I was uh, twelve, I started to play um, the blues and jazz, and uh, got into junior high school jazz band and. Uh, was kind of uh, introduced to guys like Count Basie and Gene Harris and, mm. and uh, Oscar Peterson and just started to love jazz music, you know. Um, and so kind of went away from classical music at the age of 16 and just started to play, um, play jazz and play music in church, uh, both uh, the jazz band and and playing in church gave me a, a, a solid foundation of like learning how to read chords, learning how to improvise, you know, learning how to accompany vocalists. And uh, I was always in choir, uh, both as kind of a singer uh, and, um, but mostly as an accompanist. So all my life I've been playing uh, for vocalists and I, I, I like it because um, I feel like I can be like, I always I use this analogy that they're the subject, you know, and I'm like the 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 back background of a painting, you know, like I, depending on how I frame it, you know, I can make uh, the subject look dark or light or or happy or you know. So I always take my job as an accompanist very seriously, and um, I you know aim to try to get an authentic interpretation of the of the song you know what does the song mean and also what does Elna when she's singing the song what is she trying to how she trying to tell the story and so we're kind of on a walk together you know delivering yeah. delivering the story delivering the 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 uh, intention of the song you know and, and we're very safe with each other yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That is really poetic, and I guess that's why they call you artists. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So can you tell us about how you uh, individually or together got connected with Earshot Jazz? Well, I've, I've done, over the years, I've done a number of shows for Earshot Jazz. Uh, uh, I've had my trio uh down at the uh, uh, a fair amount of concerts uh at the seattle art museum they would do those uh earshot uh thursday night concerts uh and i've done a, a number of those one with the quartet uh one with levon hardison reggie goines uh i also uh played um 
last year's Earshot Festival with um, Jacqueline Tabor. And um, yeah, so uh, I, I've, I've been involved with Earshot uh, over the years um, here and there. And I've always been really appreciative that they're um, out there, um, you know, doing all this work in the community and uh, bringing the community of jazz musicians uh, to the public, you know. And what about this you? was my first time, um, so I was really honored when they asked. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed myself. I always do. We always do. Yeah. <laughs> How was your experience this year? It was, it was awesome. Good. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was, it was different uh, not playing for an audience there because we feed off the audience a lot and the interactions uh, with a live audience. Um, but I felt like that we we were still uh, in our zone and doing doing our yeah. doing our thing. Yeah, they, we entertained the six people that were there. <laughs> <laughs> we made sure we involved them too, whether they wanted to or not. <laughs> right. 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 Well, see, and the beauty about a, a virtual performance then is that your fans and family and friends who aren't local could participate with you as well, and the performance lives on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was actually uh, uh, very nice that we were doing it this way, because I think it'll give us more coverage, more uh, exposure. Um, but most of all, it was just fun. You know, we dedicated this show to both of our parents, both of our mothers. Um, yeah. So it was also an important one for my, us. My mother had passed away on the 28th and the show aired on the 29th. 29th, and yeah. And I thought, oh, you know, she was there in spirit for sure. Yeah, yeah. My mom has Alzheimer's, so she don't know where she is. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, but that I'm sure put more emotion in your performance. Yeah, we always put a, a lot of emotion into our performances and especially uh, when we were dedicating it to our parent, to our yeah. mom. You know. Yeah, so it was an important show for both of us because we haven't seen each other for seven months. Yeah. So that was that was just also nerve wracking. But then we just got right back into our groove and <laughs> we hit the zone and we were gone. You know, so yeah. that that felt really good. I think that's from us knowing each other for so long and knowing each other musically and each other's humor, and we support each other. Period. Yeah. Yeah, it's my brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like family. I'm definitely family over at the house. Yeah, my parents love Eric. Okay, what's next okay. for both of you? Oh, God. Like I said, I want to get this program started that I got the money for, the grant for. So I'm hoping Eric will stay with me as we try to figure out how we're going to do the digital entertainment in the retirement homes and for our elderly community. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where yeah. might people be able to follow up to find out more about that project or any other ventures that you have? Uh, well, I just, website. I just got, yeah, I just got my first web page up. I'm so excited. Um, so it's ellenjordanexperience.com. And the experience came from uh, Jacqueline Tabor. And we were, did a show together. She goes, that's what you should be called, Ellen Jordan Experience. Because we never know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> but it works, you know, it works. So at com, and of course, Eric, do you have a, a, a Yeah, mine, a web mine's ericverlinde.com, E-R-I-C-V-E-R-L-I-N-D-E.com. And uh, you can always catch videos. Uh, actually, there's videos of uh, Elna and I performing uh, wow. that we taped last, last year. Um, oh, that was so much fun. That was. Eric put his mouth, he put his money where his mouth was, and he recorded everybody he played with. And it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, that was, was a lot of fun. I was putting all those videos together for my website. <laughs> that was a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure had a good time, that's for sure. <laughs> they came out beautiful. Just yeah. beautiful. Thank both of you for taking the time to come on Rainier Avenue Radio dot world. Well, thank and you. Yeah, we appreciate you. And uh, thank you for being Earshot Jazz Artists for 2020's Virtual Festival. Uh, I can't wait to see both of you in person again, but we yeah. always have online. 
Thank you. Thank you so thank you so much for having us. And you look great, by the way. Back at you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate right. being on the show.